A name that has become synonymous with survival horror, Resident Evil is a series full of horrifying, mutated monsters, and most famously, zombies. But how did this madness begin? For that we look at Oswell E. Spencer, a man whose ambitions would bring about destruction on a global scale. Born to a prestigious European family in 1923, Spencer would grow up with all the best that money could buy. His education would be no exception. Spencer would study music, arithmetic, literature, biology, and more, but he would take a particular liking to classical literature. His favorite books were a set of rare, late Victorian encyclopedias titled Natural History Conspectus. These books chronicled the journey through Africa by British explorer Henry Travis and would become very influential to Spencer. Although it is unknown what Spencer was doing during World War II, we do know that soon afterwards, Spencer would begin his studies to become a physician alongside his friends James Marcus and Edward Ashford. But Spencer was not satisfied with just studying books. Inspired by natural history conspectus, Spencer would take a trip through Eastern Europe. But with little knowledge of the area and no actual survival training, Spencer would get lost and eventually collapse. Luckily for Spencer, he is saved by Miranda, a priestess and biologist of a local village. Grateful for the rescue, Spencer stays for a while to help Miranda with her research. And the stay proves fruitful as Miranda teaches Spencer all about the mold and the biological research she had been doing. And after seeing what the mold was capable of, Spencer comes to a revelation. Humans needed to evolve. With a new goal that differed from Miranda's and believing that the mold was not really useful for his ideas, Spencer was ready to return to his university. Spencer would continue his studies well into the years of the Cold War. Through his experience with Miranda and his studies, Spencer would begin to view humans as a race destined to fall. He believed that the only way to prevent total extinction was through evolution, and the emerging field of virology seemed promising. Spencer returned to his studies of natural history conspectus in 1966, focusing on a section about the Ndapaya, a West African tribe. This tribe had rituals involving a sacred flower that would grant powers to anyone that could survive its toxins. With some extra convincing from Marcus, Spencer agrees to use his family fortune to help fund an expedition to Africa. And after three months, Marcus and his protege, Brandon Bailey, return with a virus that would be named the Progenitor Virus. By February of 1967, research had begun on the virus, but progress would be slowed when Marcus is ostracized by the Swiss university he was studying at. Spencer knew the value of his research and saw an opportunity. Spencer offers to use the Spencer Foundation to fund the research, but soon saw that the foundation's funds would not be enough. So Spencer would approach Ashford and Marcus with the idea of a pharmaceutical company. And by the end of March in 1967, Umbrella was born. Not long after the foundation, Spencer sends Miranda a letter informing her of the discovery of the progenitor virus, as well as his decision to use the symbol of the four houses of her village as his company logo. Now in need of a high-tech lab, Spencer would use his wealth and Umbrella's early success to begin construction on an elaborate mansion in the Arclay Mountains. A location that was above a vast system of limestone caverns, the mountains would be the perfect place to hide a lab from prying eyes. But with a secret lab, the need for a complex lock would arise. The key to Spencer's lock problem would be found in George Trevor, an architect from New York who was famous for his surreal designs. George was hired to design and build elaborate puzzles and locks within the mansion and would complete construction in October of 1967. But Spencer now had a new problem. George knew all the secrets of his mansion lab and could possibly leak this information. George and anyone close to him had to be eliminated. With the completion of the mansion, Spencer invites the entire Trevor family over for a celebration in honor of George's work. George, who was busy with work, was unable to travel with the rest of his family. So his wife, Jessica, and their 14-year-old daughter, Lisa, arrived at the mansion ahead of him on November 10, 1967. But unfortunately, no celebration was planned. Upon their arrival, Jessica and Lisa would be captured and used for tests. George, who would arrive soon after, would also be captured, 
although he would escape only to be killed by his own designs within the mansion. Although the exact date is unclear, Spencer began work with another scientist sometime in the late 1960s. This scientist, known only as Dr. Wesker, shared Spencer's eugenics ideals, believing that only like-minded and genetically superior humans were worthy of the powers that the progenitor virus would provide. With these ideas in mind, a new program dubbed the Wesker Project would begin. Looking for only the best of the best, Umbrella Scouts began abducting what they believed to be genetically superior children. Abducting children meant that they would be able to groom them to fit the image that Umbrella wanted. These children would be given the best possible education, and upon reaching adulthood, the best performing ones would be pulled aside and infected with the progenitor virus. Very few lived through this process, while those who were never selected were used as test subjects. With this new project and the acquisition of Marcus's research through the use of the Foundation's funding, Spencer had more power within Umbrella than anyone, but he still feared that the other members would try to seize his power. But Spencer's paranoia would reach its height in 1968 after Umbrella entered into a secret contract with the U.S. government to produce biological weapons. This contract ushered in the production of a new mutant virus that would be named the Tyrant or T-Virus. Spencer, Marcus, and Ashford would all work individually on the virus, with Marcus and Ashford unaware that Spencer was plotting a complete takeover of Umbrella. Soon, the progenitor cultures began to dwindle, and Spencer saw his opportunity. Bailey is sent to Africa along with some mercenaries to force the Ndapaya tribe off their land and secure the Garden of the Sun, the ruins that held the flower that produced the progenitor virus, as solely Umbrellas. While Bailey was gone on his expedition, Marcus is given his own lab in the Arclay Mountains, successfully separating the two. Marcus's new lab would be within the Umbrella Executive Training School, a school that was set up to train new executives for Umbrella while Marcus continued his research on the T-Virus. With Marcus and Bailey separated, Spencer turned his attention to Ashford. Being in a remote area, Ashford was an easier target. So in July of 1968, Spencer set up a staged lab accident that exposed Ashford to a primitive strain of the T-Virus, and with no antiviral developed yet, Ashford would succumb to the virus. Sometime in the early 80s, Umbrella established its own paramilitary group known as the Umbrella Security Service, or USS. This group would be the final piece in Spencer's plan for full control of Umbrella. Marcus, who had been working fervently at the lab in the now-closed executive training school, was hoping to gain the support of the board of directors through his research. He unfortunately would never get the chance. In 1988, Spencer sends the USS to Marcus's lab to have him assassinated. After the success of the USS and the Marcus assassination, Spencer begins expanding the organization and in 1992 would find the perfect additions in Sergei Vladimir and Nikolai Zinoviev, especially so in Sergei as he belongs to a select few that are compatible with the T-Virus. Using Sergei's loyalty, Spencer coerces him into handing over his clones from his previous life as test subjects. As good as things seem for Spencer, everything would begin to crumble in May of 1998. The new Sigma strain of the T-Virus would escape, killing and changing all within the Arclay facilities into monsters and zombies. So Spencer would spend the next few months on damage control, mainly removing all evidence of Umbrella's involvement as well as gathering the research data for future use. But the virus would spread too quickly, and Spencer would order the Arclay facilities destroyed in an operation referred to as X-Day. Although a Project Wesker survivor, Albert Wesker and Sergei would be successful in their given missions, it would not prevent the Raccoon Star's forces from uncovering Umbrella's involvement in the virus's production. But it would take the tragedy of the T-Virus outbreak in Raccoon City in September of 98 for Umbrella's true motives to be brought to light. But even with this massive outbreak, Spencer's lawyers and fake witnesses were able to stay in a legal cellmate in the Raccoon Trials for the next few years. During this time, Spencer would purge the senior executives in an effort to keep the progenitor virus a secret, but in 2003, Albert Wesker would leak secret files from an Umbrella hard drive he had stolen. Spencer would lose the trial, and an international arrest warrant would be issued. Spencer would retreat to his family estate and limit his contact with anyone outside his most loyal bodyguards and his personal butler, although he would reach out to another living Wesker, Alex. 
Spencer would supply Alex with equipment, research materials, and several hundred test subjects so she could test a new mutagenic virus that could restore his youth. Unfortunately, Alex held no loyalty to Spencer and would take the supplies and run. Out of every option and in failing health, Spencer resigns to wait out the rest of his life within the estate. But in 2006, he is found by Albert Wesker, and after getting the answers he came for, Wesker would end the life of Spencer. Born into a family that could provide him with everything he could ever want, and gifted with an intelligence beyond most, Spencer allowed his greed and lust for power to overtake him. Using his skills, money, and guided by a god complex, Spencer would bring about unparalleled destruction that would change the world in Resident Evil forever. I was to become a god. <laughs> Creating a new world with an advanced race of human beings. <laughs>